Normally, when you have a set of rail tracks and you want to cross over them with another set of rail tracks, you do something like this. First, you cut out the middle bits and then you connect the outer rails up in the corners so they're all locked solid. Then you put back the middle bits so the wheels have something to run on, but they need to be shortened to allow the wheel flanges to pass through the gaps. And then you need to add some lead-ins to keep the wheels running smoothly into and out of the junction. And all that needs to be kept rigidly in place with lots of sleepers. You can see why these are usually set up in a diamond instead of a square. It just means that only one wheel at a time meets a gap. Anyway, as I say, that is the way these things are usually done, apparently. But you know me, always looking for a simpler, cheaper way to do everything. Well, to be fair, I would have done it like this if I'd been starting from scratch and if I could make that junction in the workshop. It wouldn't be that difficult, but one of the rail lines was already in position and I don't have a mobile welder, so I would have had to dismantle long lengths of rail and carry them down to the workshop and try to set them up at the same angles and then make the crossing and then carry the whole combined junction back up again and hope that things still fitted together. So I didn't do that. <laughs> and I'll show you the way I did it instead, which turns out to be much simpler, but a little more limited. First of all, I had to find the existing track that runs up to the kiln at the top. And then I cut into one side of it to build in a kick switch set of points. So the new rails were now heading for the crossover. This is me just checking that the 15 inch gauge spacing is still there, still works. Here you can see the slope that these rails are at, way steeper than is recommended, but what can you do if you live on a slopey part of the world? It's going off on its own now. I've shown how I make these points in other videos, so I'll skip through that, just to say the small amount of welding that you need can be done on short lengths which can be brought out to site and set up. So everything else just needs hand tools. And if you're using the flat bar for the rails, it's just so easy to make any curves you need. First one side to show us the position of everything. <laughs> you and that goose should just team up together. <laughs> We're trying to work this out. That bit there. There. <laughs> but we need something in here. It's just not very helpful. <laughs> busy, you're lovely, but we're very busy. Go away. You see? <laughs> we're trying to do some serious planning. So now I can see where the new rails need to cross the old existing rails. But as I say, I didn't want to cut into those. Basically because I can't weld them where they are. So I left those completely untouched. And instead, well, we just built a bridge over them. A very, very, very low bridge, about two inches high. <laughs> we used a full-sized oak sleeper cut up to suitable lengths for the bridge supports. Around here you can buy them for gate posts. So these lovely lumps of oak are going back to being sleepers for another few years at least. It's just perfect. Like I was making windows out of them. Yeah. They're too small. Yeah, it's not nice working with it. No. Oh, you got them anyway. They're too tall as they are, so we set them into the ground by just a few inches. I'm hoping they'll just sit there without moving at all because they're so heavy. The thing is, this bridge only needs to be two inches high, just high enough to get over the well, lower yeah. rails. Up it is. A bit high there. 
Okay, there's a bank there. Dig it. Around Dig it. There. You could go through there with a train. I thought we were going through here with a mini digger. I thought that too. <laughs> you are that mini digger. Well, about now we realised we still needed lots of fill to support the rails up to the bridge and luckily some of this bank has to go anyway. Somebody's going to tell us we should be using proper stones. Well, we should be, Sam. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you know, Sam, you should be using proper stones. don't have any. The bank isn't made of stones. Open it! God's sake. Yeah, but they're not the sort that you can sharpen. Well, you can. You will if you, if you spend an extra three years developing a time machine that probably doesn't work. What? How dare you? I didn't say definitely. Well, maybe I already have. Oh. So why are you quibbling about ten seconds for then? Because I forgot where it is. <laughs> oh man. Most likely it's enough. <laughs> you threw it in the hedge. Or I can't remember when it is. <laughs> yeah, now you're talking more appropriately. Yeah. Oh, it's upside down. Now, have we got Don't any... Don't make a cartoon, actually. <laughs> We're running very low on, on heavy duty. <laughs> <laughs> heavy duty? <laughs> oh, I've got another heavy duty in there. They're very rare, these, you know. Cost cutting <laughs> man lives down here. You might want this back there. I just... Yeah. Oh. Is it the right gauge? I uh, know it. Let me just do. And then we temporarily set up the new rails right over the old rails. Getting precise now. Yep. Using fish plates on the oak bridge supports as the anchors. It's all about keeping the curves even and smooth because railway wheels run best on straight tracks and have to scrape their way around curves. They're designed to do that, so it's not bad, but that scraping takes energy and slows down the train. But of course, now these rails are in the way of the rails underneath. So we cut out the parts that crossed over. Should we have a cup of tea? I'm saying, okay, so how much curve do we need? Hold that up against that thing. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't really help. Those short pieces straightened up, of course, no. once the stress was out of them. So we had to bend them back into suitable curves. Oh, not too much now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more than that. <laughs> Did you make bows and arrows when you were little? Yeah. Okay. And Dutch arrows, I used to love those. Dutch arrows? What are they? Pretty good. Took off. Yeah. Tuck them. At the very end, I suppose. I suppose yeah. it could be varying a bit in the middle here. There it goes. And then we welded those together, hoping that we got the position and the gap correct. This, 
amazing. First it's time. Amazing, and it it's perfect, isn't it? Almost like we measured it. Let's just do that again. Put it in again. All right. Yeah. Oh. No. No. Perfect. Close up. <laughs> so then we have new rails set up. A slight rise, but not too bad in the context of this old field railway, which has almost no level parts in it at all. Ooh, wonderful. Okay. Close. I like it, but does it work the other way? We need another wagon. Oh, but no will. Hang on. Whoa! Ah, There's ah. a train in the way. Beep, beep, beep. Oh. What are we going to do? I know. <laughs> Let me move this. And then, <gasps> like a little bridge. Wow. That's just too easy, isn't it? It's lovely. It's not, the, it's not the approved way of crossing over lines. Isn't it? <laughs> You're supposed to have proper diamonds. But um, it sure is easy. Then you can make your own approval system. Oh yes, I can certainly... You can just approve it like that. <laughs> you have to have Now, we just need a few hundred meters that way. What do you think, lads? <laughs> Hang on, well, I'm coming too. <laughs> These new points and the bridge crossing are possibly the trickiest parts of this whole railway so far. If we can make these things, then we can make anything. And they will allow access to the new line that will run right through the orchard and out to the spoil heap at the far end. Real progress. <laughs>